Well, you asked for it. Guys, I swear I don't go into these tests wanting the models to fail. But man, oh man. Turns out C-Dance 1.0 is a total piece of shit. Every single test I put this stupid thing through, it absolutely bombed. Especially when doing one-to-one -one prompt comparisons with VO3 fast. Which means I find myself in the extremely uncomfortable position of explicitly recommending VO3 over some other product. That's bad, guys. That's really fucking bad. All of the clips in this video were generated on the official Seadance Dreamina platform. I've got stuff to say about the pricing and the user interface, neither of which are positive, but we'll get to that later in the video. For now, let's just get straight to the clips. I have another series of text-to-video clips generated with VO3 Fast that I attempted to recreate using Seadance 1.0 Mini, with one significant caveat. Dreamina limits all video prompts to 500 characters or less, which is really, 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 really fucking stupid. And it means that I had to edit basically every single one of these prompts so that they would fit properly. I did my best to preserve the overall intent of each prompt and also to try to keep things fair, I generated two 1.0 mini clips for each VO3 fast clip. It's not a perfect A-B testing method, but it's the best I could do under the circumstances. Let's start with this jumping jack reflection test. Okay. <laughs> this first one might not have been completely terrible if it had actually generated this other person properly, but even still, her facial features are really, really rough. And in the second clip, there's not only weird cloning issues and the character facing the wrong direction, but she's also jumping in and out of the mirror, something that we never saw in the VO test. Let's move on to our Rubik's Cube test. The objective here was to start with an unsolved cube and finish with a solved cube, something that VO never quite accomplished, but maybe C-Dance will have better luck with that. Well, <laughs> again, to be fair, VO did basically fail every single version of this test, but at least it generated something that kind of fucking resembled a cube for the most part. What even is this monstrosity of a thing? Also, the 3D rendering and backgrounds look like a Windows 98 screensaver. Not at all impressive. Let's try another complex movement test. This time, my personal favorite, the Red Bull mountain bike stunt. And again, this is one that VO failed pretty horribly every single time, so my expectations are low, but at this point, we're just having fun, so fuck it. Well, okay, again, <laughs> VO did fail this test, but at least it did so in a spectacular, wildly entertaining fashion. These other two clips are just sad. There isn't even an attempt to do a flip. Anyway, moving on. Let's see what it could do with our old pain in the glass test. The purpose of this test was to have the engine organically generate animated text, like for a title sequence from a show. Maybe if we explicitly tell C-Dance to generate text, it'll do better than in the previous clips. Let's give it a try. <laughs> God. So I'm guessing the ghost of Michael Jackson possessed this version of the clip. <laughs> and uh, yeah, I don't even know what's going on here. This is, uh, this is nothing. So text generation is just not a thing in C-Dance apparently, which is a pretty huge limitation if you have any clips that have any text at all. <laughs> For one final complex movement test, I decided to try something new and see if it could generate a swing dancing couple, like in our old Lindy Hop debacle test. This time I'm gonna help C-Dance out a little bit and give it a couple of high quality starting images to generate from. Maybe the problem has been that we're generating from text. Let's find out. All right, well, so much for that theory. 
Almost immediately, there's a massive drop-off in quality. Facial features and hands in particular are garbled almost immediately. Also, the movement tracking is really bad. We've got random limbs that float and disappear and reappear and split. We've got full-on shape-shifting from front to back. Again, very much not impressive at all. Up next, a series of text-to-video clips that were performed in VO and featured in a previous video. The prompts are very simple by design. They just ask for the engine to show a specific location and time period. Chicago in the 1920s, Berlin in the 1910s, India in the 1800s, and Tokyo in the 1800s, but without providing a lot of other context or instructions. This is a test to see if the engine is capable of researching and constructing a period in history accurately without a lot of detail in the prompt. For each round, I'll start with our old VO3 fast clip, and then I'll play a Seadance 1.0 mini clip, and finally, a Seadance 1.0 pro clip. Let's begin. Okay, so, where to begin? In practice, each of these series of clips was played from least expensive to most expensive in terms of real-world cost. So we would expect to see the quality to improve as we progress into Seadance 1.0 Pro, but that is clearly not what we see. For one thing, every single instance of text is garbled in the Seadance clips, and badly. VO, for all its faults, is actually really decent at generating accurate text. Sea dance is clearly not. And that's not to mention all of the weird shit going on like this guy phase shifting through the horse carts, or this woman phase shifting through a car, or this weird mutant donkey, or this guy walking backwards, or this horse that only has three legs. Like, there are issues with the VO clips, don't get me wrong. And we made fun of them at the time, but they look just overall a lot better than the Sea dance clips. And they were significantly cheaper to generate but again, we'll get into the pricing at the end of the video. I saved the best for last. I will warn you now, though, this is a retest of our classic Too Many Fingers Body Horror Test from many videos ago. If you do not want to see a bunch of fingers sprouting and twisting and doing stuff that they are not supposed to do, please skip to the next chapter or go to this timestamp. Seriously, you have been warned. Are you still watching? All right, you asked for it. <laughs> Homeboy's hands looking like a snow crab. Jesus. Anyway, I'm not sure that it's necessarily a good thing that the only test Sea Dance performed well on is the one that involves doing really horrifying, uncanny valley AI slop content. Like, AI has been making disturbing horror stuff for a hot minute now. This isn't some great milestone achievement in my mind. Anyway, those are the tests I did for this video. As you can imagine, I was pretty disappointed in these results, especially given all the hype surrounding Sea Dance right now. Frankly, a lot of the content being pushed out about it is outright dishonest by my estimation. And if I weren't already so jaded from the VO rollout, I might have fallen for it. I do still have about 1800 credits left, so I will be doing some more testing. If you have stuff you'd like me to try, please let me know in the comments. But real quick, let's talk about pricing and some of the other issues I ran into here. I did a whole comprehensive breakdown of Seadance 1.0 pricing in another video. 
So if you're interested in a really deep dive, go check out that video. Link is in the description. But in a nutshell, I paid $35 for about 4,000 credits at a rate of 87 cent per 100 credits. There are options to get credits as expensive as $1.80 per 100 and as cheap as 43 cent per 100. So this was one of the cheaper options in terms of cost per credit. Considering that each 1.0 mini clip I generated cost 50 credits, and each 1.0 Pro clip cost 250 credits, these clips cost 44 cent and $2.18 each. And when you consider that the VO3 clips I showed you cost me only 20 cent a piece, and that they're eight seconds long instead of five, and that they include native sound by default, the math just does not math here. Now let's talk about the user interface, which is somehow worse than VO3. First of all, there are no folders. You just get all of your videos dumped into a single grid page. Upscaled, not upscaled, 1.0 Pro, 1.0 Mini, everything is just mixed in together. It's a mess. At least on the workflow page, you can filter based on content type and choose favorites, but this is still way worse than the VO option of separating clips into different projects. Needless to say, it is extremely embarrassing to have VO show you up in terms of user interface, given that VO's UI is easily the crappiest part of the whole software. Also, again, the 500 character limit on prompts is extremely weird and arbitrary. I know for a fact that several other websites that offer API access to Cdance 1.0 do not have a 500 character limit when generating clips. So what is happening on these other sites? Is Cdance just ignoring everything after the 500th character in the prompt? And if not, why isn't it capable of reading longer prompts on its own fucking website? In conclusion, don't buy into the hype. Yet again, this thing is overpriced and underperforms. And again, I still have about 1800 credits left, so I'll probably do some more testing. If you have suggestions, let me know in the comments. If this video saved you any time and money, please consider saying thanks by signing up for a membership. For just $1, you get early access to all of my videos. And if not that, please do just like and subscribe. Again, I know everyone tells you to do that, but it's only because it actually does help quite a bit. A big shout out to our current members. Appreciate you all very much. And a big thanks to everyone else. I'll see you all next time.